Hello, this is Brandy of Sinclair Jewelry, and I'm going to have Brian. Oh, I'm going to talk about two. But first, Brian's going to talk about agates. So here we go. Hello, I'm Brian. I'm going to tell you a little bit about Lake Superior agates uh, with the assistance of Bentley, my cat, who wants to go outside into the 18 degree weather. <laughs> no, um, the answer is no. A lot of people think that gemstones are, are exclusively something that you have to dig down and mine, but there's actually quite a lot of stones that you can get just by walking around. And Lake Superior agates are one of those. They're formed a long, long time ago, uh, to sum it up, and they were deposited in the area by glaciers. When the glaciers were retreating up north, they carried wow. the agates uh, all the way from Louisiana up into Michigan and, and those areas. So here we have an agate. Yeah. And this doesn't look like much right now. Many of them have a, a very basic round shape. And there are some ways that you can tell that this is an agate. First of all, Let's get it wet. if you get it a little bit wet, you can see right there are some rings and that's a a prime clue that this is an agate and we can cut it up and polish it make it into a, a really pretty stone because um, there we're actually seeing inside of the stone a little bit uh, even if we can't see inside of the stone many agates have just a little bit of translucency to them so if we take a flashlight and shine it there you can see oh, okay. Okay. it's actually making the stone glow a little bit. Uh, Bentley, there you go. Oh, it's kind of hard to see, but that's kind of glowy. Is there another one in the bucket you think you could shine through? I saw some thin ones that looked broken in half. Let's see. Bentley, are you going to help sort agates? Here's yes. another good example. Oh, wow, yeah, that's perfect. Oh, cool. And there's a, a good variety of well-written books on Lake Superior agates that can tell you where to go and how to get them, and uh, other books on how to cut them up and polish them into gemstones. So it's really not that difficult, especially for something that has such a beautiful color and shape to it with the concentric rings, um, because they do come in a variety of colors, red, purple, blue, uh, all sorts of things. So uh, it's a very fun hobby that's cool. very easy for a lot of people to do. So, and which one are you going to cut up? My next step is going to be to cut up this one I was just showing you. Uh, we're going to be putting it into a giant diamond saw. Okay, let's go look at it. It's uh, That's the noise you hear in the background if you can hear it. It's this thing. There's air filter, very important. That is uh, another type of agate. Pretty bands. Yeah, this machine is pretty big. There's my hand on it. So you're going to slice that up? This is a 12 inch diamond blade and we're going to just put this rock in there. It has an automatic feed. So it automatically moves the rock forward across the blade and we can cut off slices of the rock, which we can see a small slice over here. Oh wow, hold that up to the window. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's pretty. I like how you can see the you can almost you can see almost like this weird ghosting. That's very pretty. Okay. There you go. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna let Brian get to that, and uh, it's gonna get really loud. Figured I would talk a little bit about agates and jewelry. And, I mean, they've been used for thousands of years. You can see why. They're really pretty, especially the banding. 
and just, you know, they're made of layers of different minerals that get stuck, you know, in crevices over time and they form. And I know that some can be really hard, some really soft, but like I say there's beauty in them and each one is different. I'm just looking at the bucket and the range of colors. I've seen red, I've seen some bluish coppery looking stuff, lots of browns, lots of oranges. And you saw the slice there was pretty, pretty like blackish gray with white and it was very translucent. Translucent. So yeah, you can tell why people love to use it. Uh, so probably the most notable period of agate use was in the late 1800s, you know, Victorian era. If you look on the internet and, the, and uh, eBay and such, you can usually find antique jewelry called the Scottish Pebble Jewelry. And Scottish Pebble Jewelry was, oh, well, as the name says, Scottish Pebble Jewelry, and you know, these round stones, like you see, uh, those are the pebbles, and people would slice them and put them in jewelry. That's it's a pretty common stone in Scotland, and Queen Victoria loved Scotland. Like, seriously, she loved Scotland. Little Scotty dogs? Oh, she had them. Now, if you look at a lot of paintings of her, you'll look, you know, pre-severe mourning period, initially, think about her, she's a very dour woman wearing all black. But if you see a picture of her from before Albert died, you know, at the start of her reign, she's wearing brightly colored clothes, and a lot of times she's wearing a tartan. Well, seriously, so a little tartan sash, you know, flat sash. Yeah, she loved all things Scottish, and because she kind of set the fashion of the age, a lot of people copied it, and people of Scotland became a thing, kind of. And Celtic art, which kind of dovetailed with the Art Nouveau, you can see evidence in the interlacings there, it's just started to gain prominence. And agate jewelry went from being like this common. Oh, well, you know, you, you find them, you can pick them off the ground, you have to mine for them. They, they come in brown. You know, it really wasn't seen as a very high-class kind of rock to use in jewelry, despite the fact that it's really pretty. As you saw, there's this beautiful pink and white thing in the saw right now. Um, well, yeah, it kind of gave it a sort of legitimacy as a fine gem, and people actually started using it. And again, with the Art Nouveau, the whole point was, a big part of it was not the beauty of the material. It's like, oh, I'll use diamonds because they're the most beautiful things that, you know, you can pull out of the ground. No, no, it's like if they wanted a, let's say if they wanted a shimmery effect, they might use tiger eye. Or maybe they would want the banding effect, so they would grab an agate or a jasper, something with lots of movement, you know, maybe even a picture jasper, like the, if you've probably seen it, it's a stone, it's like a landscape. That's what they would do. You know, use, use a stone to its effect in jewelry, and really not caring about the value of the raw materials, but more about the finished product, the artistic beauty of the piece, and agates lent themselves to that beautifully. And okay, I'm going to stop this real quick, and hopefully when I come back, you will see the a very pretty slice cut from that agate and uh, we'll see what it looks like. Which is another joy of agates is every time you cut one it's like a surprise because you, you never really know what you're going to get. Okay. Here we go. It, it, he's cut. Yep. This is the rock and uh, we have a couple different cuts. First I just took off this little end because there's not much to that. Mm. The first cut we made wasn't terribly exciting. Uh, can't really see the rings in it very well. It's uh, got that little eye. The eye is very small. It's interesting there. And then the next cut was much nicer. Ooh. Oh, so this is pretty. going to make a wonderful cab. That's pretty. Can you hold it to the light? Kind of hard to see, but if you flip it over. Oh wait, wait. Oh neat. You can kind of see the, the edges there, the banding, and kind of ghosts on the inside. That's cool. Can we see the the end? Oh, that's gonna be really pretty in there. That's cool. It's like, yep, agates, they're, they're, they're common, but, I mean, look at that. That doesn't mean it can't be pretty. 
that's why I like them. 